Hello, and welcome to this short demo of the Kabula platform and how it integrates with various Google services. So once we log into Kabula, we'll see a dashboard like this, and we can see a number of tabs across the top of the screen. Um, I'm not going to go through Kabula in a huge amount of detail in terms of all the different tabs. I'm just going to touch on a few that I think are relevant and hopefully bring this together towards the end of this recording. So over here, we have a workspaces tab. This workspaces tab allows us to create workspaces. So a workspace in Kabula uh, parlance is much like a sandbox. It's uh, an uh, an area where end users can uh, connect, they can run code, they can try things out, and they can do this in a uh, kind of very secure way. Uh, perhaps they can access data that's in the broader Google environment, but only in a read-only fashion. Um, so I can create a workspace uh, connecting to uh, BigQuery, uh, or perhaps uh, I may want to, to uh, write some code in Python. Um, in the latter case, what we will do is select the machine type or size that we want, the, the, the version of Python, um, and how long we want this to, to run for before it goes to sleep. What's happening behind the scenes is Kabula is requesting a uh, um, an image in uh, GKE, uh, instantiating that, and then making that available to the, uh, to the end user. Once the workspace is uh, set up, then we can connect to it. Uh, and so here we can see the connection information for this BigQuery environment uh, that we can use to connect using things like dBeaver, for example. And similarly, I could do the same with a Python workspace where I might use a tool uh, like uh, VS Code. So once I've created uh, some code uh, that I'm interested in, what I may want to do is wrap that into what we call a transformation. So here we can see we have uh, two transformations. We have um, a SQL transformation and a Python transformation. Uh, and I can click on here. And what I can see is details about the transformation. So you can see I've got these things called input mappings and output mappings. Uh, and this is kind of important because what this is now allowing us to do is uh, have that code that uh, you know we, that we created in a controlled area, bring that into a, uh, a component, a transformation, and apply some kind of governance and controls around it. So that that code we know is expecting, in this case, a couple of input mapping, a couple of tables as uh, inputs, and a table as uh, as an output. Uh, and so this allows us to start sort of controlling this and versioning this, and making sure that this is us usable by others. Um, and in particular, we may want to put this into a flow. And so we can see here we have a flow, and this flow is really uh, doing some simple sentiment analysis on uh, customer reviews from, from the London Eye. And so we can see in here, we've got some of those transformations, and we'll come back to those in a moment. So what we've got at the beginning of this flow is two components. Each of these components is extracting data from websites. So in one case, we're, uh, we are um, gathering data from Google Maps, essentially the, the Google Place reviews. Uh, and the second component is pulling data from, uh, from TripAdvisor reviews. So once those components have run, we're going to bring that data into BigQuery. That's what these two components do at the beginning. Once they're in BigQuery, we may run uh, a piece of SQL. We can see that, which is uh, going to bring that data together. Essentially, we're going to do a little bit of cleansing and a union of that data. So we have a, all that data in a single BigQuery table. The next step in this flow is to do some keyword analysis and some sentiment uh, analysis as well. So we can see what we're doing down here. We can uh, dive into this component and we can see that we're using Gemini. Uh, and what we're going to do is generate a prompt for each of the individual records and, and look for this sentiment and keyword analysis uh, and pass over a prompt for each of the records. In return, what we've asked Gemini to give us is a, a, essentially a JSON structure. 
And the reason we ask for a JSON structure is so that we can ensure that the data we get back is of a particular format. Because the next step in the process is going to be to parse that data using this uh, JSON parsing uh, transformation and output that data back into BigQuery. So now we have some information about uh, the reviews themselves, uh, the review scores, um, the sentiment of the reviews and, and specific keywords. And that will allow us to do a bit of data exploration. So we have two output destinations. I'll touch on this one first. This is uh, essentially a Looker dashboard. Share that tab, which is based on the uh, the output of this data flow. So here we can see uh, sentiment and we can see the, the reviews and we can see the top 10 negative and positive keywords. Furthermore, uh, if we come back to the flow, we can also look at a, uh, an alternate destination. And here, what we are uh, looking at is a, just like this, and shake this tab. We're looking at a streamlit uh, application. Um, this application is built in Python, and we'll come back and, and have a look at that in a moment. Um, but this streamlit application allows us to do some uh, simple filtering, um, the sorts of things that we may want to do in a, in a dashboard. But also, we can go a little bit further. So we've got a, um, a word cloud in the shape of a London eye. Which is, which is lovely. Um, but actually, and let me just uh, select some negative reviews because they're always more fun. Um, actually, we may want to do a little more. So let's select this negative review. And uh, what we can see is this review highlighted here. So there's something around booking tickets for a particular time uh, and the queue was very long. So we can generate a response to this. So what we're doing behind the scenes is we're pushing that data to Gemini and we're getting a response back that basically, uh, you know, says, we're sorry to hear uh, he had this negative experience. So what this allows us to do here is, is very simple manual process where we're getting that information back. But perhaps what we could do is we could automate this. So we could uh, perhaps have this app uh, and select lots of uh, lots of reviews that we wanted to reply to, or perhaps we could have a, a separate flow in the process, which actually responds to those flows and then pushes that data back to the uh, to the locations where the original reviews occurred. So maybe we can push this back into into TripAdvisor and automate the process. Let me switch back to uh, to Kabula. Um, and what we can see in Kabula is the uh, the this is the the Git repository, and um, and so we can see the code. If we went to the Git repository, we would be able to see the code uh, that we've used behind this, the Python code to to build out that stream that. So what uh, what we can also see in this component. <coughs> is that we've uh, we've actually had 66 versions of this of this particular app with uh, code being updated and we can move backwards and forwards to any of those uh, any of those versions if someone has made a mistake we can go back to a previous version uh, and bring that in uh, equally we can if we're particularly interested or we want to make significant changes to this flow what we could do is create a new development branch and essentially we will create a version uh, the development branch will access data, but only in a read-only format. Uh, and so we can't modify any any particular data. Uh, we can go and run the code. We can try things out in this new flow. And then when we want to bring it back into our if you like, production flow, we go through a whole diff merge process uh, and step the user through that. So uh, with that, I will uh, stop here. And thank you very much for your time.